This is a short video for new users of Data Studio who may feel a little intimidated by the interface and all that's going on here, all the options that are available when you open the program and you're trying to learn. Um, before I go any further, I'm using Data Studio 4.9 and I am using the City Limits Light workspace layout. If you don't know how to change your layout, go here to Windows, Workspace, select Layout, and you have five options here um, you can choose from for your layout. In the center here, you have your viewport where all of your uh, content is gonna go, your figures, this is where your scene is going to happen. On the left, and the right hand side you'll see large panes. Within these panes, these large panes, there are smaller panes and also a number of vertical tabs labeled. If at some point you want these out of your way, if you want a larger space for your scene and you need to move some things, you can click this triangle here and it will slide over to the left out of your way. You can bring it back in the same way. And it's the same on the right. Also, these small panes here, if you click this, that one at the bottom will disappear. You can bring it back if you need. And the same here on the right side. Sometimes it's a little hard to know which one does which pane, but they're very handy. Now, let's go over some of these tabs you see here. The first one you see here is the Install tab. Now, if you'll notice, all of these thumbnails are grayed out. They're not in pretty colors. That's because these are items in your smart content that are probably you would see in the DAS Install Manager, but you don't have them installed. So instead of having to go and open your DAS Install Manager, you can do that from here. You can click on it, right click, and click Install. The next tab is Smart Content. That's fairly self-explanatory. This is where you're going to find all of your smart content. The Content Library is just another way to access your content. I've gone over this in a previous video. Your draw settings. This is actually, these are actually controls for however, whatever draw setting you have chosen here. For instance, right now, we're using the texture shaded draw setting for our items here in our scene. You can choose wire shaded. And if you have wire shaded chosen, you can go here and it will change how you're viewing the wireframe. Node highlighting. I am not sure how that works. But that's basically what that, how that's connected. Texture shaded. Doesn't even affect the opacity. So, not sure. Don't use this one very much, so. I would have to do some more research on that one. Um, render settings is basically what render engine you're using or you'd like to use when you do your renders. This is where you choose your render engine. Right now we've got 3D Light chosen. You could change it to NVIDIA IRA. And depending on what you have chosen here as your render engine, that will drive what controls you see here at the bottom. Lots of controls for NVIDIA IRA, as you can see. And if you change it to 3D Light, your controls and options change. Next, we have the auxiliary viewport. Now, this is a very handy little thing. It provides you with a preview of what your render will look like. And it works differently depending upon what render engine you have chosen. As you can see right now, we have three delight chosen over here in our render settings. 
So when you're rendering in 3D Lite, you can actually render a small preview of it here by clicking this button. Now it doesn't look very pretty here because I don't have any lights in my scene. But that's basically how it works. Now if you want to have a constant view of what it would look like like an NVIDIA, choose NVIDIA up here and it's going to show you what your scene will look like when it's rendered in Array sometime this year. Moving a little bit slow. There we go. Also, it's kind of cool because in this window, you can rotate your scene independently of your main viewport. You can rotate, you can move, you can zoom. You have the same controls here in your auxiliary viewport that you do in your main viewport. So that's another tool for you to use. Now your scene tab, that's going to list everything you have loaded in your viewport. There's the Genesis 3 female, the bra, and the panty. Now if you'll notice when I change, when I choose different items in my scene, you'll notice things are changing down here. Well, that's because these tabs and controls here are dependent upon what you have chosen here. Let's stick with just three female and go to here's the parameters tab. There are lots of controls under your parameters tab. If you highlight just this female and expand it, you'll see you have lots more um, controls under here. You've got arm control, scale, size. If you go through and explore, you'll see you have lots of lots going on here. Morphs, there are some some custom morphs list there. Also, pose controls are listed here. Now, what I like to use the parameters tab for for the most part are well, pose controls, but also for posing. I've got my node selection tool here, chosen here, and I'm selecting Genesis 3's arm. Let's bend it, twist it, move it front and back. So basically the controls you can use for posing. If you want to restore her back to default, go that way. Also, you'll find here if you highlight the goddess bra, <coughs> you will see morphs that may have come included with the clothing items you have. can't see that very well because it's dark. Whatever morphs you have going on with the clothing you have loaded. They could be listed under Actor and Adjustments. They could be listed under Morphs. You just have to explore and see where they're at. That's where you're going to find them. Now, you may also find Morphs. Well, you will find Morphs under the Shaping tab. This is a tab I use for the most part when I want to morph my Genesis 3 or Genesis 8, whatever figure I have loaded in my scene. You'll have listed here all the character packs that you may have purchased from DAS 3D. Custom character morphs, all listed here. Um, they're broken down here underneath different body parts. All the morphs. You'll also see all the morphs listed for the other items you have listed, you have uh, loaded into your scene. You'll find those there as well. The surfaces tab, these are your materials. We have Goddess Bra selected in, your scene, in our scene tab. So you're going to see the textures loaded and the um, shaders set up for each material zone. There's the normal map, the bump map. You're going to see all of those listed here. And it may seem like a lot, but eventually when you become familiar with how they're set up, 
it will become like second nature. All right, if, here's a small thing. Let's say you have, um, we have the bra chosen. Let's say it's something that just is driven by color. There's no texture map. If you want to change the color real quick, go under base color here and just change your color that way. Your color with your color picker. Get that question a lot. They just can't find it. Also the panty. Expand the panty. Choose the material zone. You can either, if there's a texture map there and you don't want it, just remove it and go in with your color picker and choose a color. It's really that simple. Now, moving on to lights. I don't have a light in my scene at present. Let's go and create a new spotlight. Now, that's not where I would leave it but for the purposes of this tutorial I have a light in my scene and now you can see I have a light controls that's how that works now the camera tab same thing I have an extra I have a default camera loaded and here are all of my camera controls so that pretty much covers all of these tabs you see here. I'm sure there are some that aren't appearing here that we could go over, but for this tutorial, that's all we're going to do. I will show you real quick, though. If you have tabs here that you don't use, and they're just in your way, you don't want to see them anymore, click on the tab, then right-click and close it. It's that simple. If you'd like to get it back sometime in the future, or there are panes you don't see that you need, window, panes, and you'll be provided with a list of all of the panes available. If you want the install pane back, there it is. Click on it. It's going to pop in. It's not going to pop in in the same position, but you can move You can move it. You can move all of these. You can move that one down. Well, maybe you can only move them up. I don't know. But you can also move them across the way if you'd rather have them over here. There it is, right down there. You move it up. Cameras. You want to move that up? There you go. So it's you can really customize it however you like. So, that's it for now. I hope this really helped you out. See you next time.